Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Monday, December 7th in the year that still shall not be named. Um, this is CosmoQuest Community Coffee, and I am your host, Jillian Rhodes. It is Monday, which means that it is time for space art, astronomy and art, and all of the wonderful ways that they intersect and fuse and collide and generally make wonderful things as it happens every Monday. So the, the two things that you need to know before we continue with this episode is one, it was about 10.30 a.m. when my brain broke. It is now 8.35 p.m. <laughs> I have survived the day and actually been somewhat productive, but my brain is broken. So expect gaps <laughs> in, in the ability to function. Um, the second thing is uh, I don't have a guest and I decided that actually way back when I was just starting this show, somebody suggested this today's topic. Um, they suggested, why don't you take a look at Alan Beam's art? Uh, who's kind of the first, maybe, probably not the first, but a first space artist. Um, and so I didn't have any other ideas for today. And I thought, great, what I'll do is one of my rabbit hole research episodes where I kind of just start from the beginning, click on a bunch of different links, investigate various tabs, look at things, and generally give you a stream of conscious while Jillian discovers things. So that's the plan for today. Um, and it is going to be about Alan Bean. Uh, so I actually uh, didn't really know about Alan Bean, which is embarrassing because I think I should, but he apparently was the fourth man to set foot on the moon. He was the lunar module pilot of Apollo 12. So um, I'm on his website right now. Um, he is apparently no longer with us. Um, since 2018, but his website is still here. And he says, the first paintings of another world by an artist who was actually there. Um, again, I, I doubt it was the first paintings of another world, but definitely by an artist who was actually there. I don't know that that term applies to anybody else necessarily, I guess. Possibly there, there I'm sh I know there are artists who have been on the International Space Station, but I'm not sure if there are other artists who have been on the moon. So he could probably claim that he is the only artist who is actually there who's making the paintings. So there you go. Uh, so he says that he was in orbit 59 days. Um, and he, so he was painting earthbound subjects. And so when he retired or returned, so his fellow astronauts basically convinced him to resign from NASA. Wow. Um, he says he's resigned from NASA in 1981 to devote all my time and energy to painting, celebrating the great exploration that was Apollo. So, um, that's incredible. After over the years, my art has evolved into a mixture of painting and sculpture, textured with my lunar tools, sprinkled with bits of our Apollo 12 spacecraft and a touch of moon dust from the ocean of storms. Holy cow. Okay, so this is definitely, I did not know about this. Let's go look up about his early art. So before we take a look at his lunar art, let's see what his first, his early art. Okay, so he just got some kind of basic stills, though he is, this is, I mean, it's, it's kind of a rocket. How do I make this thing go away, I wonder? Hide story, there we go. <laughs> and here's a rocket. This is cool. Let's find the Let's find the story. So this is still, this is, um, oh, oh, wait, this looks like an interesting story. As I was flying home in my T-38, 
I could not stop thinking about the amazing sight I had just experienced. Uh, says, I worked on the painting for several weeks, but it was still a pitiful effort and I was unable to even come close to what I had seen. Um, I'm in the middle of a creative fit right now and I feel this deeply on a spiritual level. Rather than just tear up and throw away all the work that I'd done, I overpainted my realistic painting with an abstraction that when I look at it now, does not even close to what I'd seen. Learning to paint what I had experienced on the moon was going to be a lot more difficult than I had thought. Again, I, I feel the artistic pain right now. A more beautiful tree. His abstract stuff is nice. I like, this is very, um, but this, this is very, I don't know. I, I'm not, I don't know enough about art to say what the style reminds me of, but this reminds me of a style before I say something totally wrong. After all the humans have gone. This is, this, okay, so this is one of his early attempts at what I thought our landing site would actually look like after we had gone. So this is how he remembers that. Um, this is not the kind of art I wanted to create. I wanted to paint the moon in a variety of beautiful colors in the same way Monet painted the gray granite Rouen Cathedral and the yellow-brown green stracks. Um, in other words, to be true to myself and what my eyes had seen, I had to replace my astronaut, engineer, and scientist heart with the heart of an artist. That was not easy, but it sure feels right today. Huh. I don't know where this moon painting is now. I think it's probably under why my Monet moon paintings. All right. Okay, that is actually... These are very cool. They're not like, I thought early art kind of meant like before he was an astronaut, but apparently not. Um, that's fair. What I actually want to do, I want to look at, I want to look at the moon dust is what I want to look at because, oh, oh, while I was busy getting lost in Alan Bean's art, somebody uh, gave us bits which is amazing. I don't know how to say your name, MK2 Aerospace, uh, but thank you so much for the bits. And I can give you a happy dance to thank you so much for that. Um, I don't have dogs or cats or furniture, <laughs> but I can, I can have a happy dance for you. Okay. So let's, so what is he sculpting with lunar tools? This is, Okay, as an Apollo 2 astronaut, I wore my moon boots and with my hammer pounded in the lower portion of the flagstaff, broke off large pieces, broke off pieces of large rocks. Okay, so he, he used replica of his moon boots, but the actual hammer and actual bit of the front of the court tubes to sculpt the textured surface, kind of like this painting. That's cool. Okay, and moon dust. There must be moon dust. Uh, starting with a trace of actual moon dust from the patches and insignias I wore in my Apollo space suit. Wait, but show me the paintings. I want to see the paintings. Uh, I want to see the moon dust paintings is actually what I want to see. I think I'm going to have to Google this because these are all sold. Obviously, he's sold all, all of his paintings, which is great, but not for some curious soul who wants to find out. <laughs> I, I opened this gallery so we're looking at the galleries now in case you didn't see what i was doing we're looking at the galleries now and i opened this and i was just like before i didn't look at the caption okay fair enough i didn't look at the caption i just saw this picture and i was like wait is he skiing he can't be skiing can you ski on the moon <laughs> and then yes i read the actual uh caption and it says skiing the mountains of the moon so he is skiing after all, maybe he's also skiing. No, he's not. 
I thought you were. First mountain. These definitely are obviously textured, like you can see the, the boots textured in the back. Um, but that's, that's very cool. This is gallery two. Um, I wonder how they have decided to, I wonder how they have decided to group these galleries. <laughs> I just love the caption on this. Uh, painting, which is please take me back home, guys. <laughs> and if you can see in the reflection of their helmets, the uh, module, I guess. Cool. Now we move on to gallery three. Oh my gosh, I'm not running along. All right, I'm going to just kind of skip through these because there's something else I want to investigate. I want to go on a different rabbit hole. This one says Earth is watching. Interesting. OK, all right. So I think that was all I wanted to look at from his website. I was um, I just Googled Alan Bean art and um, the, a bunch of quite fascinating things came up because apparently they have they have um, he's titled his paintings, which is obviously interesting. Um, but I particularly was, I want to look at this one. I opened this tab before, but then I, I got distracted with something else. And so I didn't actually look at it. But apparently this is called, that's how it felt to walk on the moon. Um, so let's look at this. and see what's oh here's a, here's a new york times article we have to look at that see what it has to say okay so here's what he says about this particular painting um th that's how it felt to walk in the moon is my answer to the question i've been asked most often since november 19th 1969 I felt a long, long way from the people and places I love the most. It seems unreal, impossible. From time to time, I would look down and say to myself, this is the moon. And then I would look up at a small, beautiful, bright blue and white sphere hanging in the mysterious, luminous black sky and think, that is the earth. Words have never expressed what I experienced, but I think that in this work, I have captured some of the excitement and exhilaration I felt. I wanted an eye arresting image, something to communicate the excitement of being on the moon. So I began experimenting with exciting colors, bright primary tones, but that didn't feel right. And then as I worked, I began to see a rainbow effect in the layers of paint. That feeling of all the colors being mixed, but also harmonizing finally allowed me to tell how it felt to walk on the moon. Um, obviously he said, saying that it is sold out, which is fine, but I actually just want to look at it. I wish I could, can't I zoom, can I not zoom in on this? Maybe I can find a, a good picture of it. This is the Alan Bean. Oh, that's his website. Oops. <laughs> I went away from his website and now I've gotten redirected back to it. Oh no, this is, it's a different, it's a different one. Ah, I can't, <laughs> somebody give me a large version of it. Maybe Pinterest has a large version. Oh, this is interesting. Oh. Online being online, online gallery. Oh, so this is actually a picture of him on the moon that he actually painted. Oh, this makes so much more sense. I think this is going to be a small picture too, but never mind. All right, I'm going to give up on finding a large, a large version of this, but. Um, 
you can see that this is the picture and this is the painting. So that's really, that's very beautiful with the, with the colors. And I think you can see the colors better in, in here. That's how it felt to walk in the moon. Very cool. All right, let's see what the article has to say, if it says anything that I haven't found yet. <laughs> he says, when I left NASA, I made up my mind I was not going to be an astronaut who painted, but an artist who used to be an astronaut. I think it's really interesting that he's talking about, you know, how the different perspectives, this is kind of a lot of what a lot of my, my guests and, and a lot of the research that I've done on, on science art kind of turns up is that somehow the perspectives of science and art are, are very different, but they're also very complementary. So somehow they, they really influence and inform each other, but they're also really, really different, which is why they can help each other so much. And it's, it's interesting. He's kind of articulating that because he's been on both. Um, he's been on both sides of that. <laughs> so he says, so he's basically taking a, he took a watercolor course and, and he, he was painting flowers and fruit, but um, <laughs> his astronaut friends are just like, well, you know, why are you painting the earth? This one weekend, I didn't have any flowers to paint. So I said, I think I will paint this photo of Pete Conrad on the moon. Um, why not? And so he just didn't have flowers to paint. So he's like, hey, let me paint somebody on the moon. And the rest is history. It's funny how things are just happy accidents most of the time. Um, so it's, this is, it's interesting, it talks about kind of how his style developed that he kind of, you know, he did the, it says in the 1980s, he realized he did not want to paint the moon strictly as it appeared. Um, he allowed colors unthinkable on the moon to creep into his work. He said, if Monet painted what he saw, we wouldn't celebrate him today. He painted a little of what he saw, but then he painted mostly the way he felt about it. <laughs> and yet his methods still reflect his scientific side. He builds a scale model of every scene he paints, my God, and uses a big light to simulate, the, to simulate the sun and to get the shadows right. He works out the angle of the light and the positions of the people with mathematical precision. He wants the details to be historically correct. That's dedication, holy cow. <laughs> Each painting tells part of a story he believes only he and the other astronauts who walked on the moon can tell. Um, this is what human beings do when they first go to another world, he said. There is Pete Conrad clicking his heels and Jack Schmidt trying to ski down a hill in, in the moon dust. So I thought when I saw that picture of the guy skiing that, that he was just inventing that, but apparently somebody was actually trying to ski down moon dust. Okay, why not? <laughs> there is a self-portrait, his arms raised in celebration. I think I've seen this. I'm going to go find it in a minute. In another self-portrait, he strikes a swashbuckling stance. It shows a cocky attitude, he explains. I think you've got to be pretty cocky to believe you could go 240,000 miles in these fragile little vehicles and get back alive. Well, that is fair. That is fair. He worries less these days about the future of the space program than about his legacy as a painter. He longs for a show in New York or another art capital. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, let's see if I can find that self-portrait. I, I think it was back in the, oh no, not here. It was back in the, 
Go back. Go back. Was it this one? No, I don't think so. This is the, this is the any is anyone out there? <laughs> that definitely we have to look at this. I thought, where is the cell portraits? Oops. Tiptoeing on the ocean of storms. Wait, let me see if I can just find this directly. Alan Bean's self portrait. I think it's this, yeah, it's, it's the one that's called as anyone out there, but it's actually, um, is actually the swashbuckling one. Let's see. What else? Yes, I think this is the one that it's referring to. I'm sure it's on his website. <laughs> I'll just have to go back to the website. It looks like this person is fishing. This one. I don't think it is, though. Probably if I had actually read the stories on the website, then I would know what these things are. But. The astronaut who painted the moon, there's a book. Oh, it's a, it's like a kid book. Hold on a minute. I have to check that out. Oh no, this is a, this is not a painting. This is actually a picture. Google, you have failed me. The true story of Alan Bean, the astronaut who painted the moon. Oh, this is cute. Scholastic video preview. I think we can watch a few seconds of this. If my computer. Hi, I'm Dean Robbins, author of The Astronaut of Alvin Bean. I was a kid. Oh, no, he's just talking. All right. We don't need to see that. <coughs> it is a Monday. Oh, somebody just gave bits. I, I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. I didn't hear it, but I saw it. Keeper of Maps says, because Mondays are overrated. Yes, they are. I don't even know. Can I, can I, can I? Can I happy dance to that? Thank you for the bits in any case. <laughs> we love your bits and your subs. This is how the CosmoQuest world goes around, is, is how your bits and your subs and your patronage and all the other places that you can get involved and support CosmoQuest, including community coffee. All right, so here's the thing, um, it's almost, whatever time it is it's the next hour after the half an hour in which this show begins <laughs> in the time zone of your choosing um in mine it is almost nine and i think we have seen a fair sampling of alan's beans alan beans work i'm sure there's a whole lot more to discover and find um but it's about as much as my brain can handle for the day um, and in the meantime, we saw some pretty, pretty, pretty pictures of, of the moon. And we, I mean, I think it's quite interesting that he's talking about it in terms of like Monet and, you know, the, the artistic perspective of painting another world, because I think it would have been so easy and probably he struggled with this, is, you know, to to try and represent exactly what he saw. Um, but sometimes, and I think this is where art it has its mo its power, is that what you see and the actual like representation, the act exact representation, is not actually the experience and what the artist does and can do, and that's what Alan Bean is talking about, is enhance or, or interpret the actual physical reality so that it reflects the reality, but also the emotional experience of it. 
Um, and I think that, you know, uh, without having been there personally, you know, I look at these paintings and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's what the moon looks like. I know I wouldn't know if it's more or less colorful and, <laughs> you know, I can imagine that probably it's not very colorful on the moon, but I don't know. I've never been there. Um, so it's interesting to, to see that he actually, you know, talks about like, this is what he's done and these are the colors and, you know, these are the techniques and, and it's, um, I don't know, it's artistically interesting. And, and I think um, some of my favorites that I've seen of his work is, is the ones where the astronauts are just kind of playing around. Um, so <laughs> Gino says, my Monday didn't behave like a usual Monday and I'm confused, but yay for Alan being nevertheless. I don't know. My Monday behaved like a Monday and I'm still confused. So I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so I think, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Better for you guys, better for me. Um, next week, I do have a guest. Um, she's a, kind of a multimedia artist. She's done some really interesting collages. I found her as usual through the SETI Institute Facebook group, the Art Imaginarium. Um, so it will be, it will be great to have her on the show. And I have uh, a couple other guests. I just met somebody um, here in Lahore, actually, who sent tons and tons of space artists my way. So um, I hope that uh, when I gather myself and my ability to, fo to focus and function, I'll um, be inviting a lot of people and have some excellent and exciting guests coming up. Um, again, if you don't know, every Monday is Astro Art Day on Community Coffee with Jillian. Um, today, the rest of the week, there's the usual CosmoQuest programming, which includes the Daily Space, which is your daily science news roundup. Um, not today, as far as I know, Mondays is Minecraft Monday. Um, and then there's also Astronomy Cast, which is on Friday. There's the Weekly Space Hangout. There's uh, all kinds of, all kinds of programming coming up. And um, of course, uh, as always, you know, follow the links, which should be coming up in the chat because people are here uh, for how to get involved, how to donate, how to support, where to find us on social media, come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, it's a great community. And hey, you know, you never know, you could be the one hosting community coffee in the future uh, on another day. So uh, I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm glad that you enjoyed the show. <laughs> I felt like it was a little, I was, I was here, but halfway, more or less. <laughs> but it is a Monday and it is the year that shall not be named. And we are almost, almost, almost through. All right. See you guys next Monday and have a wonderful week.